Welcome back to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. I'm Pete from Pete.new. In the previous episode, we were wandering around the upper city level of Taris, uh, getting up to all sorts of fun. Oh, Karth wants to talk again. All right, let's speak. Yes, what's on your mind? I wonder what's on your mind. Um, is this a good time to ask you some more questions? I guess I did say you could ask me questions later, didn't I? Is this really necessary? I would just like to know you better. Oh, well, if it's an interrogation you wanted, why don't you say so? <laughs> this isn't an interrogation. I never said that. He's quite touchy, isn't he? I was just joking. Though you do seem to be full of questions. It's rather refreshing, to be honest. Let me ask you something first, though. I've been going through the battle aboard the Endar Spire over and over in my head since we crashed. Some things just don't add up for me. Maybe you could tell me what happened from your perspective. Um, I wasn't in a position to know what was going on, really. Neither was I, to tell the truth. I was on board as an advisor for the most part. The battle began so fast it's anyone's guess as to what actually happened. We lost the ship and a lot of good people. For what? In the hope that the Jedi powers would save us somehow? Not that Bastil had much of an opportunity to act. We didn't choose that battle anyway. It got forced on us. Hell, I'm, I'm, I'm just as surprised that any of us are alive to talk about it. Come to think of it. It's more than a little surprising that you happen to be here, isn't it? I mean, just what is your position with the Republic fleet anyway? No idea, mate. Um, I'm just a soldier. I'm sure there isn't anything unusual about that, is there? I don't know. Unless you consider that you were a last-minute addition to the crew roster and you just happened to be one of the survivors. Hey, this is the first I'm hearing of this. Um, what's so odd about me being added to the crew at the last minute? You were the only one. Not to mention that Basilisk's party was the one who requested your transfer. Okay, now this guy's talking about all this, I'm starting to get a bit paranoid. Um, <laughs> and funnily enough, uh, there's a, the word paranoid also pops up in that uh, thing. Um, I have no idea what you're talking about. The Jedi requested numerous things when they came on board. And hell, they practically took over the ship, as far as I could tell. Considering your connection to Bastille and the Jedi, whether you know it or not, your presence here seems a little convenient. I'm probably wrong, and this is probably nothing. I learned a long time ago not to take things at face value ever, and I hate surprises. I'm telling you, Karth, I had nothing to do with the crash. I expect you're right. I've got no real reason to suspect you of anything. Still, it's better to be safe than sorry, right? Are you always this suspicious? Look, it has nothing to do with you personally. I don't trust anyone. And there are no reasons. And no, I'm not going to discuss them, so can we just keep our mind on more important things? Yes, let's do that. Good. Like I said before, I prefer action to talk anyway. Okay. Uh, as I was saying, yes, yeah, so in the previous episode I was wandering around the, the upper level of Taris, getting up to sorts of fun. But we have mostly um, finished this section, I think. Uh, I'm just going to go into the droid shop, uh, which I didn't get a chance to look in last time. Uh, there's an incomplete droid I can talk to. Or not. Uh, right, are you the proprietor? King Kunshi Kakachin Awana Wamata Nishi La Chorga King Kun Palamuna Reji Ching Pala Niska Mule Dun Rata Tigan Podranko The Sarcha Doma Wana Kondatama with Tim and Bon Rang Thong Mule Ra on Shadfuring Um Ni Patoka Wanga Chonzi Tse Ika Krotu Hakujije Watu Yama Kama Wuna Henak Neck uh, uh, I do so hate getting into conversation with aliens. What do they have against Twi'leks? I think what I might start doing is just kind of editing out most of the alien chatter. Just, just leaving the, uh, the subtitles on the screen long enough for you to be able to read them yourself, if you so wish. You'd think people would be a little more tolerant of others in this day and age. I guess stupidity and ignorance will never go out of style. Uh, utility droids, what do they do? What don't they do? They're great at making vehicle repairs for starters. Pretty handy to have in a fight. Small but tough with a surprising amount of firepower. Skip. And there's no better code breaker or security system slicer around. Not that I'd ever condone you doing anything illegal, of course. Skip. Um, let me see your droids. She's only got two droids left. A rebuilt T3H8 unit for 50 credits. And a top-of-the-line T3M4 model with all the options, but he's not for sale. 
Uh, I'll take the T3H8 unit. I'm never going to say no to a droid. Here's 50 credits. I know a bargain when I see one. This little guy's as reliable as used droids get. She did the reconditioning on him herself. Don't worry, he'll follow you everywhere. I mean, he'll follow me everywhere. Is there anything else I need? Um, let me see what you've got for sale. Yes, I want to see your inventory. Her prices are very reasonable and all her droids come with a money-back guarantee. Uh, let me see your inventory. It's a bit limited because of the quarantine, but if I need anything to do with droids or computers, this is still the best place to shop. So she's offering companions, parts, uh, droid light plating. Da -da 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 -da. Bunch of stuff. Don't really know what it is. Um, maybe I can sell something. I'm, I'm going to hold on to these med packs. I think they might be useful. Uh, I've still got multiple blaster rifles. I've got four of these now. And they sell for 120 each. You know what? I'm going to sell three. Sell one, sell two, sell three. There's no way I need more than one blaster rifle. Um, but I'll keep all these other things because they might be useful. Okay. Uh, so I've got a droid now. Come on, droid. Follow me, droid. There he is. Hey, little friend. Little guy. What? Yeah, he's lovely, isn't he? Right. Onwards, team. To this doorway over here. Oh, no. That's not what we wanted to happen. Okay, um... Well, she did say she had a money-back guarantee, so let's go and see if she's going to honour that. Welcome back to her shop. Hey, where's that little T3H8 unit she sold me? It blew up. I came to get my money back. It blew up? Huh. She thought she'd taken care of that little cross-wiring problem. Well, she runs an honest business. She doesn't have to give me a refund, but she doesn't want to lose a customer. Here's my money back. No hard feelings? Hmm, haven't had much luck with persuasion. No hard feelings. Okay, good. Right, yeah, anything else I need? Uh, no, we're going now, bye. Okay, got me 50 back. That was a bunch of rubbish. Not sure if I'm going to buy droids from her again. Actually, no, maybe not. The thing is, in these games, then, you know, stock sometimes rotates quite quickly. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 let's see what we've got for sale. Uh, I want to see your droids. Let me see your droids. T3M8. Good man, firepower. He's not for sale. He's a custom job that she's holding for a very special buyer. Sorry. Okay, bye. Yep, yep, yep. You suck. Well, that was some disappointing droid purchasage. Let's, uh, let's head in through this door. This is the one place in the upper city of Taris that we have not yet been to. What? Streets. We cannot sit idly by while this pox infects our society. Pox? Friends and fellow humans, I bring you a warning. A warning of a great plague spreading across our planet. Please, listen to me. My name okay, is I'm listening. Kolu. Will you join my cause? We must band together if we are to stop the spread of vermin and scum throughout Taris. Vermin and scum? What are you talking about? I am speaking of the hideous-looking aliens who walk the world of Taris. The Wookiees and... You know oil painting yourself, mate. Bit, all of them! Listen, friend, for these are dark times. That is why I, Gorton Kolu, have formed the Anti-Alien League. The time has come for action. We cannot sit idly by while aliens blight our glorious planet. <laughs> I don't know which is worse, your hate-mongering or your ignorance. I'm still a good guy, but you know, tell me if you do want me to start turning evil, I am incredibly, incredibly suggestible. You are like all the rest. You will not see the truth. On the day of reckoning, you will suffer with the rest of the alien lovers. Come on, we should keep moving. Cooker, no, people like him can make trouble for us. All right, Karth, fine. We'll leave him. He's not worth it. Uh. Elevator and some shelves. Okay, uh, and something through here. Let's uh, let's just before we go down the elevator, which I believe leads us to the lower city. Let's just um, have a little peek at. Ooh, that's cute. Uh, let's have a little peek through this door. Can we get through this? It looks kind of military. Yeah, military base. Can I go in? It's locked. I wonder if Karth can open uh -huh. it. Karth. 
On it. Oh, we're going yeah. in. No, no dice. All right, let's head back to the elevator then. Karth leading the way this time. Do you feel uncomfortable, Karth? Is there too much pressure for you? Right. This elevator is off limits. Only Sith patrols and those with proper authorization are allowed into the lower city. It's obvious from the way you're dressed that you're not one of the Sith patrols. So unless you have the authorization papers, you must move along. Um, okay, I'm going now, bye. Move along then. We're gonna need some kind of disguise if we want to get past this guy. Hmm, would that happen to be the clothes that I picked up in the previous episode? Okay, let's uh, let's find somewhere to hide. They can't see me here. Let's uh, let's change our garb into the Sith armor that we have here. Here we go. Watch this. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. Don't mind me coming on through. Woohoo! Let's head into the lower city. All right. Uh, first thing is, I don't like looking like Sith. So let's get back into the combat suit. Uh, I've got my vibro sword equipped. That's good. Okay. Right, Karth. Oh, that's not what I was wearing earlier, is it? Yeah, I think I was wearing clothing before, wasn't I? Yeah, no, no, that's no good. No, I want the combat suit. Combat suit for combat. Cool. Okay. There's uh, some sort of action happening. Oh, it's like West Side Story. They'll teach him who's strongest. Well, apparently he's strongest. <laughs> Bit of a sucker, sucker punch there. There's lots of waiting when these guys fight, isn't there? They do ta -ta -ta, polite wait. More strangers. Oh, that might mean us. Yeah, okay, we've got we've got fighting on. Uh, hit you, flurry, many flurry. Miss, miss, miss. Well, that sucks. Alright, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm switching to uh, to the blaster rifle. Let's, uh, let's do that. Give you a power blast. And you, power blast you. Oh, what happened? Am I dead? Am I stunned? This is bad. I think he, he did a trick on me. Wakey, wakey. What? Right, come on, Karth. Uh, you need to sort of wake me up or something. Yes, what's in your mind? Um, never mind. You got it. Okay, I'm feeling a bit better now. Uh, but I think I need to med pack. Uh, let's not use the advanced one. Let's just have the standard med pack. How does that do? Uh, that gives me a fair old chunk of health. Yeah. Uh, let's loot these remains. Hopefully, there's um some kind of healing items in here to offset my. Wow. Yeah, I, I got I got quite quite pulled apart there. Uh, Volcar shock stick. That was it. He shocked me with his shock stick. Uh, well, this blaster rifle. I, I don't know. Was it any good? Uh, I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. Let's head round to the left for starters. There's a cantina. Oh yeah, I've I've had I've had good times in cantinas. Uh, now let's not talk to the bouncer. Let's just walk right on through like we belong here. Okay, you're Uriah. Hi there, not too many people come here to speak to me anymore. Most prefer the fancy surroundings of the upper city canteen. Not me, they're a bit posh up there. Nobody up there carries the kind of Pazar cards he sells. Am I interested? No. No, I don't want to purchase any cards. What about you, Gelrude? Greetings, stranger. My name is Someone who speaks English. Are you a Pazak player by chance? It's so hard for me to find a match now that I've been banned from the Upper City Cantina. I don't have a Pazark deck. You don't have a deck? Well, we can't play unless you have your own deck. Maybe you should go talk to Garuk in the Upper Cantina. He's looking to retire from the game, so he might sell you his deck. He'd probably even throw in a free lesson for you. Just come back and speak to me when you get your deck. People keep plugging this Pazark game. I'm thinking next time I'm in the Upper City, maybe I should go and uh, get myself a deck. Go away. What's going on here? They just want to say hi to big bad bounty hunter Kalo Nord. Nah, this can't be Kalo Nord. He's supposed to be tough. This guy's nothing but a runt. And he can count. You be funny, tough guy. You know who we are? We're members of the Black Volkers. You don't want to be getting funny with us, tough guy. Still counting. 
He doesn't understand. Why is he counting? He's trying to count how many of us is against him. It's three against one, Callow. What do you think about those odds? Well, you have something more to say? Three. Three. That's as high as he goes. The grenade. Messy indoors. Oh, some remains I can loot. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, nothing. Cool. I want a turn. Callow Nord. Callow Nord. Go away. I'm gonna say something. He's gonna say one. Um, I saw how you mopped up those black Vulcars. Nice work. One. There's the one. Uh, I'm not looking for a fight. I just want to talk. Two. Um. Okay, I see your point. I'll be off then. Smart. Again, 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 again. I want to talk to him again. I want to play again. It's a good thing. Oh, he's done. Well, that was that. Right, anybody here with a name? Let's see. Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter. Bib Sarul. Lynn Seckler. Can't I see she's auditioning? This is her shot at the big time. She can't risk screwing it up by talking to me. Ah, what's the use? There's no way Bib's going to hire her unless he gets a chance to see her dancing with a partner. Maybe she should just give up. Or, or, maybe I could be your partner. Because you're a beautiful lady. Yeah, she's getting desperate. She'd hate to blow this audition. But how does she know I'm any good? Hmm, persuade, persuade, persuade. Uh, I'm good enough to get you through your audition. Duh. She's trained for years. Dancing isn't just wiggling your butt in the air. <laughs> if I think I can just step up and start dancing at a professional level, I'd better think again. Let's keep persuading. Um, Same line again. I'm good enough to get you through your audition. No, same again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. Yay! Well, I do have that certain look about me. A confidence of movement. And a persistence. I have to do, but I must not screw this up. She's got a partner. She's ready to audition. Okay, Lynn, you've got one more chance. I'll give you a minute to get your partner set up. Then let's see what you've got. Okay, she's got, he's got time to watch us for three dances. We have to make them count. I have to follow her lead. And the more complicated our steps, and the closer we dance, the more it will impress Bib. But don't get in too close if you can't handle it. She doesn't want a clumsy oaf tripping her up. I must try not to screw this up for her. Okay. Okay. Right. She's starting to dance. Look at those moves. Um, let's, let's, let's keep a safe distance at first, just beside her. Yep, yeah, yeah I, look, I look comfortable. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine. Dancing like someone's dad. Okay, this guy's not impressed. We've got to kick it up a notch. Right, yeah. yeah, a little more than that. Okay. Next dance a little different. Watch for the steps, then jump in. Um, a punchy air. Yep, yeah, swip, 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 punchy air. Right, um, beside her, behind her. Running around in circles looks rubbish. Let, let's go for behind. That, that seems very erotic. As long as I don't get punched in the face. Oh, that was rubbish. My timing's awful. Oh, I suck. Oh, he liked it. Inconceivable. And that's to go. Don't screw it up. Keep it simple this time. Okay. Keep it simple this time. I can do that. So what are my options? What's the simplest option going to be here? Um... <laughs> No. Okay, dance beside her. Nice and simple. Am I helping? I'm not sure I am. I think I'm... I think I'm... Oh, that was good. Good timing on that little hand sweep there. And he likes it. He likes it too. Did she get the job? Yeah, she gets the job. Welcome to the Starlight Entertainers, Lynn. What about me? Do I get a job? She made it, she doesn't believe it. Right, she needs an outfit, rehearsals, contracts. Okay, and I get her eternal gratitude. And now I'm not good enough for her to deign to hug me. But um, I should stop by and watch her if she's ever performing. Free tickets, well that'll do. Yeah, I won't refuse that. 
quite a lot of XP for that. Awesome. Will she talk to me? No. Right, who we got in here? A bounty hunter and a hut. And Zax, he's in charge of the bounty office. Am I looking for work? Do I want to hunt bounties? Or am I here for information? Um, Gurney said I should speak to you about the Ragcool serum. Do I have it? It's worth a thousand credits to Darvik. I don't have it. Okay, so this is the guy I sell it to, not the guy I buy it from. Fair enough. Um, I need some information. Right. 100 credits to find out about the street gangs. That seems a little high just for information. I'll give you 50. There. So it's obviously an odds thing, this, um, this persuade check thing. Um, I'll be going now. Yeah. Yeah, he wants me to hunt bounties for him. But um, that's not really my bag. Karth, you're really in my way right now. Really, really in my way. Okay, Karth, you've never been more in my way. Even when I'm running away from you, you're in my way. What? Maybe let's um, maybe let's get Karth to lead. All right, who else is in this cantina? Oh, cutscene. I told you to leave me alone. So give me some space, bug eye. Your breath smells like bantha poodoo. Little girl should not be in bar. This no place for little girl. She should run her way home. Who you call a little girl, tuba face? Apparently she needs a lesson in manners. I wonder what format that's going to take. Zalbar, a little help here? Zalbar's going to be huge, isn't he? Hmm. <laughs> Complaining. You can finish eating later. Besides, you need the exercise, so get over here. This will sort the men from the boys. They want no trouble with Wookie. Their problem is with her, little girl. You got a problem with me? Then you got a problem with Big Z. So unless you want to take on my furry friend, I suggest you greenies hop on out of here. Little girl lucky she has big friend. And off they go. I'd like to talk to this mission person. She seems cool. Recognize you, and I know pretty much everyone in the lower city. You must be new down here. I guess that makes me and Big Z your official welcoming committee. That's weird. A Twilik who speaks Galactic Basic, also known as English. It's not that strange. Most aliens can speak Basic. They just prefer to use their own language. But I grew up here on Terra, so I just sort of got used to speaking the native tongue. You showed a lot of guts dealing with those Valkyrs, kid. You got a name? My name's Mission Veo. And this big Wookiee is my best friend, Zalbar. I'd offer to give you a tour, but the streets down here aren't safe. But if there's anything else you need... I want to ask you some questions, if I may. Well, you came to the right person. If you want info on Lower Terrace, I'm the one to talk to. Davik, the Lower City Gangs... I even got the scoop on that bounty hunter, Kalo Nord. Tell me about Kalo Nord. He seemed quite enigmatic. Kalo Nord's one of the most famous bounty hunters in the galaxy. Oh, I've never heard of him. I've seen him kill people just for trying to talk to him. He hangs yeah, me around too. Jack's bounty office, but I don't think he's looking for work there. All the postings there are small time, way beneath a bounty hunter of his caliber. I figure callow has been hired by Davik to do a special job for the exchange. I'd wager a thousand credits that as soon as the quarantine ends, he'll be getting off this rock. All right, um, tell me about Davik. Davik's part of the Intergalactic Crime Syndicate, but I guess everyone knows that. But I hear he's got a new ship for his smuggling operations. The Ebon Hawk. I don't know much about space travel, but I hear that ship's fast enough to break the Sith blockade. Of course, this is all just secondhand rumor. Where would he keep it, do you know? If Davik does have a ship, he's got it locked up in his estate. Nobody gets in there. Except the people working for Davik and the Exchange. Alright, uh, tell me about the Lower City Gangs. There's only two gangs worth worrying about here in the Lower City. The Black Volkers and the Hidden Becks. Sometimes Zalbar and I hang out at the Beck base. The Becks are led by Gadden Beck. He's a good guy. Lost his sight in a swoop bike accident a few years ago, but even blind, he's a great leader. Not like that traitor Brezhik. Before he took over the Volkers, he was a hidden Beck. Gadden considered that ungrateful space slug his adopted son. Okay, um... I I'm gonna be going now, but these hidden Becks, they sound pretty cool. Yeah, this dive is pretty boring. No action around here. Come on, Big Z. Let's go. 
Oh, he'll go hungry. Can't you think about something besides your stomach for five minutes? Come on. We'll go see if there's anything good to eat at the Beck base. I definitely want to go to the Beck base. Sounds ace. Uh, right. Uh, where have we been? Where have we not been? Here's some people. Uh, Jagacha. Who and what are you? What do I want? Come to stare? You think we're strange? Um, sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Okay, what do I want then? <laughs> I just came to stare at the freak. Uh, no, I wanted to ask you some questions. What kind of questions? Um, can you tell me about your home world? Oh, no. Too hard to talk about. Okay, okay. Um, I notice your other head doesn't say very much. Nothing that I would hear, at least. Alright, what kind of creature are you, if that's not too blunt? I would call them... Perduag. Alright, um... I'll be going now. These guys are not friendly. Uh, yes. Uh, just me. Right. Uh, anybody else in here with a name? Uh, you guys don't seem very interesting. Uh, is that us back to the door? Oh no, we got some. Oh, Holden. Huh? I know that name. What? Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. My attention was kind of focused on the Twi'lek dancers. Look at them waggle those head tails. I don't normally go for these alien girls, but I've had some bad experiences with my own species lately. Maybe it's time for a change. Know what I mean? You're the guy who put the bounty on Dia's head, right? You're here about that? I guess Zax must have mentioned me to you at the bounty office. Fair enough. I don't care who takes her out. Just so long as the job gets done. I can't let her get away with what she did. That wench tried to cut me with a vibro blade. Why would she do that? Because she's crazy. She started screaming that I was making advances, and the next thing I know, she's coming at me with a knife. Yeah, right. Sounds to me like she was defending herself. I admit I was drunk. Maybe I got a little fresh. But it was no big deal. She didn't have to cut me. Sounds like maybe you got what you deserved. Hey, you weren't there. She totally overreacted. Hmm. I want the bounty on Dia's head removed. What? I can't do that. Think how it would look. I work for Davik. I've got a certain reputation to uphold. I can't let her get away with this. There has to be payback. Although, I do feel a little guilty about all this. Dia's a good-looking gal. It'd be a shame to kill her. Tell you what, I'll take 200 credits. 200 in credits? For lifting the bounty. <sighs> well, let's give Persuade a try. If you hire someone to kill Dia, it will look like you weren't man enough to do it yourself. If I let her get Darn. away, with it, I'll look even worse. She's got to pay, either with a life or 200 credits to buy my forgiveness. It's looking like I might be paying, paying 200, or I can. I can threaten him. Hmm. I reckon I could beat him in a fight. But would it turn the entire cantina hostile? Hmm. Okay, it's, it's got to go. 200 credits. Now get that bounty removed. Don't worry. I'll stick to my end of the bargain. I'll go tell Zax right now that the bounty is off the table. Yeah, well, that's done, isn't it? Yeah. Have we done the right thing, Karth? It's an expensive way to live, but, you know, it's, it was the right thing to do, wasn't it? Gelrude. Oh, you, Pazak guy. Yeah. Okay, Um, I think uh, that's probably where we're going to end this episode after looking around the cantina. It's been lovely. Uh, the next place I want to go to is the Hidden Beck base. Um, but that will be in the next episode. See you next time. Bye-bye.